Hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel. And welcome about this very interesting uh, series of videos about power system protection. Specifically, you must be aware that I have been recording this most recent series of videos related with practical aspects of uh, protection systems. Specifically, we have been working with a study case. In this study case, we are testing two very important relays, the ABB Red 640 and the uh, ABB Red 630. And the idea is that we are interested on testing uh, the non-directional overcurrent functionality, specifically the IDMT uh, characteristic, okay? And to do this job, we are taking the advantages of the modern um, relay tester. In this case, we are using the beautiful Omicron CNC256 Plus. And that is the job, okay? Well, let's go for business, okay? As I, I have been talking to you and I have been explaining in the previous videos, the idea is that inside the DHENSYS lab, we have this virtual sewer station that you can see here on the right hand side, okay? You can see this is the DHENSYS lab uh, superstation. And I have configured this superstation in order to have two radial feeders, and we are using two top of the line overcurrent relay. We are using the feeder protection relay, the REF630. And also for the second feeder, of course, this relay is a monster. They have more, more, more functionalities. But in this case, we are using the ABB Red 640 for a uh, feeder protection. And what is the plan? The plan is that we are interested in testing the overcurrent tripping characteristic, but the IDMT, okay? For that reason, as you can see, this is the physical configuration inside my lab. You can see the ABB Red 630. You can see here the 640. And the very important component in all this, this is the CMC256+. Plus, and that is the Omicron device that we will be using for testing the overcurrent tripping characteristic, okay? But before we move forward, you must understand that protection system today, protection systems, they are cyber physical components and they belong uh, uh, or, or they are a very or a key component on the digital transition. As a consequence, as a consequence, you one aspect that I must explain here before we move forward is the connectivity inside the DHENSYS superstation, okay? And all those two relays, the ABB630 and the 640, they have connectivity using Ethernet. And in this case, in this case, remember the Dickensys lab has a very flexible infrastructure and we configure this in order to have a very dedicated local area network, okay? What I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is that those ABB relays, they allow you the communication and you can use different ways to communicate with this relay, okay? The ABB 630 has a Ethernet port at the back and also the 640, they have Ethernet ports and we can go to the switch that we have inside the, uh, the DigNC's substation and from there we can go to the router, the firewall and then to the whole uh, power system that we are simulating inside the DigNC's power system, okay? However, this is one way to communicate. Again, we are using the LAN Ethernet connection, for instance, for the 6340, the Ethernet port is located at the back, okay? Uh, however, that is one way to connect the relay or to communicate with the relay. The other way is the classical way that we use when we are doing field testing, okay? In real life, in real life, if you go to a substation, the most simple way to establish communication with the relay that you are testing, the protection relay that you are testing, is using what we call the service port. And the 630, the 630 has the Ethernet port 
the service ports located at the front panel and also the the 640 also have an independent connector over here a uh, ethernet a classical rg45 uh, terminal connector for the service port okay in this in this session we are using we are using the service port in order to replicate the classical behavior that we use in a classical field, um, field trip to the substation. As a consequence, we are not using, we are not using the other way to communicate that that is inside the Ethernet connection, the local area network. Okay. Okay, but let's move forward. Okay. And for the wiring, for the wiring. You must recognize that we try to make the Dickensis lab extremely flexible. And what we did, what we did is create or, uh, or intentional connection. As you can see over here, we are using four millimeter banana terminal. So that is a very folkloric name, but this is a plug that is four millimeter that allow extremely flexibility for connection, okay? And those terminals over here, they are uh, connected directly, physically connected directly to the RES uh, 630. And those are connected to the REF uh, RES 640, okay? Uh, we are using this classical banana plug. Those banana plug, they offer safety and also give me flexibility in order to allow the student use different topologies, different setups, and assess the behavior of the protection systems, okay? Okay, let me, let me move forward. When we arrive to the substation, when we arrive to the substation and we are interested in testing relays, the first step, well, they, they, are, they are different steps, okay? In reality, we need to be sure that the relays is connected from the CT and BT and many other safety aspects, but I will not discuss those aspects over here, okay? What I will do is I will go directly to the first step, and that is establishing the communication between the relay, the workstation, and the application that I use to read and write configurations and settings for this relay. And if you want to get more details, there is a specific video where I explain how to set up the IP address and so on in order to use one application and to communicate with the, uh, with the um, relay and uh, perform some reading and writing configuration and settings, okay? In this video, I will assume that you already saw the video and for the ABB devices, for the ABB devices, the, the application that we use to establish the communication and to send and receive uh, settings and configuration from the relay is the very well-known PCM600. The PCM600 is basically a very powerful software that allow you using the Ethernet connectivity using TCP IP to talk with the relay and allow the access to read and write settings, configurations, and so on, okay? In this video, I assume that you already know how to install the PCM600 and how to use that, okay? Something that I would like to discuss again is regarding the communication network inside the lab. As I say before, the lab has been configured in order that we can use a local area network to access the relay through a switch. But this is the centralized way to access the relay. This is the way that we are not using here. In this video, we are using the most simple way, the way that we use typically in the field, and that is connecting the workstation, that that could be a laptop, and using the Ethernet port from your laptop, we can connect to the front panel or the service port of the relay, and we can establish the communication, okay? Well, when we establish the communication with the relay, of course, we have access to the settings. 
we have access to the configuration of the relay and that is a very important point because the first step the first step when we are trying to test our protection functionality in a relay is basically uh, get the data get the data of the system that we are working and in this case, I configure the substation, DGNC's lab substation. It's basically a 20 kV line to line voltage. That is the voltage of the main bus bar. And from there, we are going down for the radial, for the radial uh, feeder. Okay. In this case, I am showing you the configuration. In this case, I am showing the configuration for the REF630, okay? For the REF630, we are using a voltage transformer, and this voltage transformer is coming from, uh, from 20 kV to 110 volts, okay? And for the CT, we are using a very simple configuration. We are using 2000 amps at the primary, and one amps is used for the secondary. Okay, if you go to the refs, uh, if you go to the PCM 600, and you access the relay, you can get the configuration of this amazing relay. Okay, and the first step that I would like to do before I move forward is I would like to be sure that this data is properly. Uh, set inside the relay configuration and to do so is extremely simple using the PCM 600 using the PCM 600 we can go to the ref 630 specifically to the hardware configuration the IM2 and over there we can find the parameters that define the current transformer okay current transformer for line one two three and residual and zero sequence in this case is extremely simple you can see that this is primary secondary for the primary we have 2000 amps for the secondary we have one amps as a consequence the relay the ref 630 have the proper values about the current transformer okay now let's see what is happening with the voltage transformer well for the voltage transformer what we need to do is again going to the uh, pcm 600 and in this case in this case what we need to do is again going into the hardware configuration the iem2 and find the mm, mm, transformer the voltage transformer configuration okay in this case the transformer must be working to uh, from 20 kb to 110 110 volts is basically the input of this relay but because we are using a star connection we need to use the line to neutral value and as consequence you can see here the settings okay secondary we are using 110 volts and for the primary, we are using 20 kV divided by square root 3, and that is 11.542 kV, okay? And at this moment, we are sure, we are sure that the relay has the proper settings related to the feeder number 1, and from there, we can move for the next step. And the next step, it will be presented in the next video, and the next step is basically starting the explanation, showing the explanation about the uh, configuration of the CMC256 Plus from Omicron to prepare and to set up the test for the, um, for the characteristic, for the IDMT characteristic of this overcurrent. Um, well, this is all for this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching and please stay in touch because in the next video I will start with the test universe that is the software, the application used to configure, to prepare and to execute all the tests for protections, okay? Well, thank you very much for watching and I will see you at the next video. Bye now.